Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Payson. With me today, relationship life coach Cindy Chavez. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. We are indeed happy you decided to join us today. And uh, we are joined in a moment by Jackie Gates as well. Here she comes coming onto the screen here. So uh, that's going to have to be the new intro. We're going to create a new intro that includes Jackie because Jackie, you are part of the team now, which is a wonderful thing. I am flattered and very excited. Yay. <laughs> so it's good stuff happening and, and lots of exciting stuff is happening. Um, I want, I've been cluing people in on the podcast for the last couple of days that uh, I have signed up for, and most of the listeners know what this is, I've signed up for what's known as Taya Bootcamp, which is sponsored by David Strickle. Jackie, I don't know if you know who David Strickle is. David is a channeler. He channels like Esther Hicks channels um, Abraham Hicks. Okay. And his, his particular uh, channel channeler name instead of Abraham is the Stream of David or the Stream. And uh, he was a co-host here on the show for a few months um then he had to go on to do some other stuff but uh what's really cool besides me taking his his uh i don't even know what to call it it's a course coaching workshop i don't know what else you call it uh is that he's going to be visiting us this coming wednesday so next week you guys are going to get a chance to meet david you're going to get a chance to hear the stream if you have questions you ever wanted to ask abraham you'll have a chance to ask those questions because it's very similar to asking abraham um it's also a little different in the sense that um, answers that come from Abraham are very positive, they're very upbeat, and and they kind of dance a little bit around the hard issues. The stream doesn't hesitate to go after the hard, dark issues. So that's the one real difference between the, the, the two, I think. But it's it's really quite an interesting experience. And uh, I, was, uh, I was chatting with David last night, actually, and we worked out a thing where uh, not only am I going to take his Taya boot camp, as it's called, but I'm going to be relaying on the show day by day what my latest progress is and what I've been experiencing. One of the most fascinating parts about Taya boot camp is that your first thing that you do is you do a private session with David as he's channeling the stream of David. So basically, you get the stream directly talking to you in private about your stuff. And the thing I'm, I'm both looking forward to and kind of nervous about is one of the key one of the key points of that session is that the stream tells you what your what, what they call your transgressors your, your three transgressors that have most affected you earlier on in your life that transgressor is essentially the same thing as you know, some sort of traumatic event or experience that leads to blocks and resistances that's what they call them transgressors now they don't dig in to ask you what they are they don't try to help you like a coach or a therapist would, they simply tell you what they are. No. And, and so, wow. I'm, I'm really curious to see wow. what I'm going to be told. <laughs> a little bit anxious too, I have to say. <laughs> wow, that's going to be so interesting. It is going to be interesting. So, so and, and this Walt, is going to be would you spell for me what you're saying about yes. what the title of the boot camp is? Because I can't, I'm not getting it. It's an acronym, T-Y-A, TIA. And the acronym stands for, um, oh, don't forget it now, Walt. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> it stands for, um, what's the first word? Trust. Yes. Trusting your abundance. Oh, wow. Or, or trust your abundance. Right. Uh, and basically, Taya Bootcamp is David's implementation of what he did in his communication with the stream to improve his own life. He, he's basically using the that experience turning it into kind of a course slash coaching experience uh to give everybody else the chance to talk to the stream get the kind of guidance he got from the stream um there's a, there's a series of modules that you do sort of like homework if you will um there are a series of coaching sessions both with him and with others who are involved in the program um there's a mentoring thing i mean there's like the, it's this whole great big package of <laughs> things that you do over a 12 plus week period and apparently it's fairly intensive so i've heard great things we actually have listeners who had signed up for it and who have been reporting uh, great experiences themselves so it's going to be interesting it's going to be oh, fun this is really exciting oh it's it going to be fascinating yeah. <laughs> we and we get to live vicariously through you yes. that's right yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, 
Walt be the one that's nervous yeah. at first. <laughs> Let him try it first. We'll just watch. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, it, that's funny. I was I was just in my mind thinking, oh, this is like a a mentorship, like a spiritual mentorship. And then right as I had that thought, you said mentoring. Mentoring. Like, yeah. But I mean, when someone is using their experience of how they, you know, progressed to help you do the same thing, I mean, that's mentorship. So it sounds really powerful. Yeah, especially when when the 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 end guidance isn't even of this planet. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> it's right? kind of surreal. Yeah, it's going to be so good. Oh, I can't wait to hear all these things. I know. I'm excited too. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Well, Could that I... was a surprise. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. That. What, so what do you hope to get out of it? What was your reason for signing up? Uh, well, partly because David invited me, which is unusual. Usually people just go to him and kind of unusual mm -hmm. to get an invitation. Um, and partly because, well, I mean, like, I'm like any of us. I'm constantly trying to work on myself, get better at, at this stuff, this conscious creation stuff that, that we're all pursuing here. And I mean, I'm like anybody else in that I have certain things that have been harder for me. I think, I, I mean, you tell me, ladies, but in my own experience, anybody I've ever talked to, they get two of the three big things right. You know, they, they get the money thing right and they get the relationship right, but the health thing doesn't work. Or they get the health and the money right, but the relationship doesn't work. Or the health and relationships are fine, but they can't make a dime. It's yeah. that kind of a thing. There's yeah, always like, very much, yeah, I get that. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's a weak area, right? And, and actually, it's usually not that clear cut. Usually it's like a combination of things. Well, I want to attack that kind of thing. And more importantly, I want to really just continue my growth. I want to accelerate my growth. I've grown a lot over the last, uh, how long has it been now? 2007. So 14 years since I first got exposed to the secret. Um, but I, I, I want to grow more. I want to grow faster. And I want to, I want to see if I can cut through to where I have total confidence, total trust that everything I'm going to ask for is coming quickly. That's my goal. Nice. So, yeah. And you're this it's so interesting that you mention a seven year cycle, you know, because mm. in astrology we know about seven year cycles. It um oh, mm -hmm. it's it's a Saturn return, which is when we start um basically we, we tie up all the loose ends from who we've been over the past at fourteen years or seven years, whichever increments, and then we start working on a new version of ourselves, a new things. And sometimes oh. sometimes um it, it in, in, in modern um, parlance, I suppose, you'd, you'd call it like a midlife crisis. We get that. Um, but we also, that's the first Saturn return when you just want to torch everything and start again. Um, <laughs> and and then in the, the when you get to the 5960 um, Saturn return, which is another series of se 12 of seven years. No, sorry, seven years cycle. Um, when you get to that one, that's when you go, Okay, everything I haven't done yet, I'm going to do now, and and it's so it's so interesting that you're right at the beginning of a cycle. Yeah. It's actually very fortuitous because it means that you're going to have seven years to put everything that you learn and gather and find out about yourself. You're going to be planting seeds that you can watch bloom over the next seven years. It's going to be really cool. You know what's interesting is that you bring up that seven year cycle, and I know most of us have heard also that every cell in our body renews itself in a seven year period. Yes. Right. And you then literally not who you were. Mm -hmm. Right. Physically. And then mm -hmm. this morning I was talking to somebody um, explaining the, that all of our thoughts, ideas, opinions <laughs> of ourselves are pretty much almost completely formed by the time we're seven, our first mm -hmm. little seven year cycle. True. Um, mm -hmm. and so often, you know, that seven-year-old is still running the show <laughs> until we go through these other cycles. Like Jackie was talking about Saturn return, the first one, the second one. I'm in my second one now. Me too. Uh, where we start to realize that we, we can see patterns that repeat and we realize that we don't need those patterns to repeat anymore. Mm -hmm. And everything starts to become very new. And like Jackie said, we decide, oh, everything I haven't done, now's the time. So it's really cool, all of those numbers, right? And the how we can see it in our own life, like the different uh, transits, really, the different mm -hmm. parts of us and how we, pro how we progress over 
these chunks of time, mm. I think it's I think it's awesome, and I'm excited for Walt's adventure, and I'm excited <laughs> that next Wednesday we get to start a little yeah, so to pick his brain and and talk to David too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and of course, you know, we know that that when nothing's linear, we're not actually coming back to the same place. We we're it's all a spiral. So as spiral. you come back to each position, you're mm. revisiting what looks like the same things, but you are different and you yep. have more information and, and, you know, and so it's, it's going to be thrilling. I think. I'm, I'm glad to hear actually that it's a seven year cycle because I thought my years of torture lasted from my early twenties to my late forties. So it's nice to know it's actually shorter than that. <laughs> uh, my years of torture by Walt Beeson. <laughs> they do say time is subjective, right? I mean, an, hour, an hour in a dentist chair is like, you know, 40 years long and an hour, you know, sitting, having coffee or watching a sunset is 20 minutes. So yeah, <laughs> true. it's all, it's all is subjective and well what, what what is objective though is that it's not just going to be, be me taking die boot camp and having david next week but we're also having some other guests from the PAG community joining us on the show so i wanted to go through a few of those to give people a little bit of a teaser uh first of all tomorrow on the show that i do with dan mangana and alex king a gentleman named michael brent howell is going to be joining us he is a Thai boot camp graduate and uh, his role is basically to welcome new members to the Facebook group that Taya runs, um, helping guide them in the group so they can get the most out of participating um, with all the Taya resources. So that's going to be fun. And then next Tuesday, we have another uh, major player, I guess you could say, in the Taya world. Uh, her name is Kat Wanders. This is interesting. I love her description. She says, I'm on my fourth year of Taya Mastery. Taya Mastery is the next level up after Taya Bootcamp. So once you get through and master Taya Bootcamp, the next level up is the Taya Mastery course. So she's in her fourth year of Taya Mastery. She's co-authoring David's next book with him. And she's also an author, a Taya coach, and she's known in the group as the Taya Sexpert. So that <laughs> should be interesting. Definitely. <laughs> Not sure what that's going to be all about, but it's, it's definitely one of the three important areas. That's, that's for sure. right. <laughs> Relationships, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you can go all the way back to. Um, we were talking last week about the classic, some of the classic books like *The Science of Getting Rich* and mm. um, Napoleon Hill's *Think and Grow Rich*. Napoleon mm. Hill talks about um, the transmutation of sex energy. Mm, that's right. Why? Because that's the creative energy. It's how we mm -hmm. make more humans and it's how we make everything with that actually with that same energy. So I see it being a player in law of attraction and how we make magic in the world. It's just, just an energy like anything else. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I, I suspect Very that's what uh, we're really going to hear, too, which is really cool. That's really good stuff. So anyway, that's the exciting news. And, and I, I'm going to kind of treat it as like a. Uh, uh, kind of like a diary in other words every episode mm -hmm. i'm going to be giving like the latest information about you know what i've been experiencing because uh, i guess i guess the way you, you're supposed to do the modules you do a module once every three to five days i guess it is and I, I gather there's it's like three quarters of an hour of stuff to listen to and then you have your own stuff that you have to do so i don't figure two hours per module um, so that'll give me quite a bit to talk about i would think just by itself and then periodically you have these these meetings with coaches and so forth and that's going to be interesting so when do you start content. i don't know exactly yet Dave, david has to send me um a link to uh, set up the the stream meeting where i i have my one-on-one -on -one with the stream and so i i haven't actually done that yet because i haven't gotten a link from him but it's going to be soon it's going to be in the next few days okay and that's the piece yeah. i'm interested in is what they'll tell you that you're not <laughs> aware of yet Especially since, I mean, like I said, David was on the show as a co-host from, I think it was October through December of last year. And so I, every single week, actually, it was longer than that. You know what? Actually, Aren't we on video July. because of David? We're on StreamYard because of David. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's that's right. Yeah. He's the one who introduced us to this. Um, Debbie G brought us in to um, use her system. But yeah, David was the one who told us about it for the first time. And uh, during those... I guess it was about six months that David was co-hosting. I got to basically play the role of the person in the hot seat for the benefit of all listeners. So I was always trying to ask, ask questions based on what do I think listeners would want to hear about. So I got to hear that side of it. I really know the streams 
get you know take on stuff mm -hmm. I, I i understand that part of it um so the curious part for me is going to be okay well what happens when it's just you <laughs> yes because now yes, i get to just talk about my stuff but, yeah you know, when you're under the microscope yeah absolutely. And, and, yeah. And, and, and find out what my stuff is that's going to be the other i don't even know what it is <laughs> that's a that's an intriguing thing is that um that you can have it's like when people do Akashic records and that kind of stuff. Yeah. When you can have yeah. something that's in your field, in your energy field, because that's what they're reading, um, mm -hmm. that you are completely oblivious to. Mm -hmm. And I find that fascinating. And yet you're at the effect of it. You know, it must be influencing you. Oh, sure. Um, and it's, it. yeah, I have to find that fascinating. I, I find, too, that a lot of times... Um, Part, most of you is oblivious to it, but there will be some piece of evidence that makes it feel true for you. Mm -hmm. That you'll be like, oh, like I know I've had that experience of being like, oh my goodness, this makes so much sense. Like certain yes. things that never really made sense and that ties yes. it all together, yes. right? So, so that's kind of uh, exciting, really. Yeah. That's what I'm anticipating, literally. Mm. I'm anticipating it's going to go just like that. And I'm going to be sitting there, okay, what's the first one? I get the first <laughs> one, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, of course. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> it's going to be that kind I'm, of an experience. I'm, I'm curious about there being three. Do we all have three? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued as to why they call them transgressors. What are you transgressing? I, I think the idea of the transgressor is stuff that's transgressing against you. Oh, against you. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. All right. Yeah. In other words, stuff that that messed you up in your life. Okay. Yeah. And it can be it can be something as as dire and complex as being physically or sexually abused, or it can be as mild as you know you had a disagreement with a teacher and the teacher gave you detention, or you know it can be yeah. anywhere in the range. Yeah. That, and it's always current life. I believe so. I can't answer that for sure. But my impression is, it, yeah, it's from your current life, most often from your early life. Okay. Oh, from, most often from your early life. That makes, yeah. sense. That makes sense. Yeah, the first seven years. Right. That makes sense. First I, seven to 14. I've been trying to remember. I don't know why. It came up for me this morning. I was just pondering, and I thought, what, you know, about people's earliest memories. Mm. Like, mm. I have a memory that I know I was three but I don't think I remember anything from before that. So. I know I don't. I, I have my first visceral memory um, is, is my father disappearing. Um, but, and I was four. four. But I don't remember. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember any. I have, it's so interesting because I'll see a photo. My mother took a photo of me at the age of about three and a half or three. Um, I, I kind of held her dinner party guests hostage. There was a, uh, lot, of, uh, a lot of dancing and singing. And, dancing, I know. <laughs> and a lot of twirling that went on. So every dinner party had this like show that I would wear. Um, and thank God they thought I was cute. Well, they said that I was cute, which, yeah. But anyway, so my mother has a photo of me in full performance mode at about age three. Um, and, and I have a, a scant memory of that, but I'm curious. I do, I'm curious about myself as to whether I'd remember it if I didn't have the photo, right? Or whether the photo just sparks a memory that's too far away, or whatever. But before that, no, I don't have. I don't have any um, memories before about the age of four. I think it's really I, interesting as to people who can remember early, early days. I, I actually do remember some early stuff. Not a lot, you know? but I do remember some. Um, I know and you mentioned a photo that kind of cued it in my mind in terms of one of them. There's a photo of me when I was two years old and I look like I'm about five or six. I, I look quite old for my age, but I was only two. I was, of course, you know, dressed up for mm -hmm. a few year old, that kind of thing. Uh, it was my mom's treasured photo until she passed. My wife now has it. But I remember, I don't know exactly what it was. Was it the sitting for that photo? There, there's something about it that I, I remember feeling what I see in that photo when I look at that photo. I remember I remember feeling that experience. In terms of something I remember as an actual event, I can't tell you exactly what age I was. I imagine I must have been one, maybe one or two. Wow. But um, we had, at that point in time, they, they didn't have much in the way of high chairs for, for kids. So they had this feeding table 
It was mm -hmm. imagine like a card table that sat maybe a foot and a half off the ground, and there's a hole in the middle for the kid to sit in, and then they would use that you know to to feed you. I can remember sitting in that table, and hmm. we had that table for many years afterwards, so I knew which table it was, and I had that that very visceral memory of that that table all around me, basically trapping me. I couldn't go anywhere, and I wanted to go everywhere. But I remember looking around, I'm seeing the table, I'm seeing the living room, and I'm wanting to do stuff, and I can't do anything, but I'm excited. I remember that. That's wow, that's amazing. I was thinking you said that you looked much older when your two-year-old picture, and I was like, I'm not sure Jackie realizes how tall you are, Walt. <laughs> that's probably true. I, I'm six foot eight inches tall. How tall are you? Six foot eight inches. Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's nearly two feet taller than me. I am, okay, so, I am you know. five feet if I stand up really straight. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how funny that is because my wife, when, I, when she was my intended, even before she was my intended, when we were meeting, when we were talking for the first time, obviously the height issue was an issue. I wanted to bring it up. And so I asked her how tall she was. And she said, well, I'm five foot six when I stand up straight. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I can be five foot and a half an inch if I say, but I'm usually in heels and 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 I tend to own the room because yeah, mm -hmm. I'm often the smallest person there. So, but yes, I, I don't have any trouble believing that. By the way. <laughs> I got lots of roles um, when I was younger. Uh, like I played Liesel at the age of oh, wow. 22 because I was the shortest of the girls that auditioned. I was also oh. the oldest by four years, but and I'd That's been married for three years at that point. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I played Liesel at 22 because of because I'm I'm weenie. But then I also lost roles, so you know it's a, it's <laughs> something. I'm always in these days of Zoom calls and you know virtual friendships. It's so interesting to meet somebody in person. Um, invariably, somebody will say, "You're so small." It's like <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is news. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you look much taller on screen. Yes, right. <laughs> I'm the same size as everyone else on screen. Right. Yeah. So people fun. said that to me too. They said, "Oh, I thought I thought you were going to be much taller." Yeah, <laughs> it's I'm so five, interesting. I'm well, five I, two if I stand up straight. Mm -hmm. I think I might be shrinking a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's so well, interesting I, that that um, the that is as well as we can get to know people and talk to them on Zoom. And I'm sure there are people who have watched you, Walt, for, for ages and ages on, you know, on every week. Um, the, the experience of meeting in person is a completely different energetic oh, yeah. ex experience. It's so interesting because we humans are, you know, we're now so technologically advanced, but we are basically pack animals. We, we are meant True. to be in groups and you know, face to face and stuff. So I that's one of the things I'm really looking forward to now that COVID is more or less under control. Um, or we're vaccinated, whichever comes first, is is getting to meet people that I've, you know, I've got to know so well over this past couple of years. Yes. Oh, yes. Like Jackie and I have never meet in, met in person, but we're making a plan. Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> After really what, when you're like five, my five best friend. I've never yeah. met her in person. How is no, that possible? No. It, yeah. Both of my best friends I've never met in person. Cindy and another girl that I talk to every week, never met them in person. But, yes, we'll make a plan this year. But, you know, you were right. We are – humans are small group primates. Mm -hmm. We thrive in small groups. Mm -hmm. And so part of that is because our energy fields interact. And so I was wondering about this the other night. I'm like, gosh – even though Zoom has been a godsend for all of us or, you know, whatever platform we're using, like this video where we can see each other, um, how much of that do we miss out on and we don't really notice it, that we're oh, not, sure. that our energy fields aren't connecting the way mm -hmm. we would be, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that too. Lockdown has lasted too long. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I've enjoyed meeting two of my co-hosts. Um, one of them is Alex King, who does the show with me on Thursdays. Um, and um, the other one is Anne Marie, who used to be a co host with me. She lives in Middletown, Connecticut, about, uh, I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes south of here. And so we got to meet them. And actually, uh, she and Mike, um, who was also on the show, and Louise and I often like to go out together. And it's, it's a very different experience 
talking to her that way than talking to her on the show. And, and mm -hmm. I love it. I mean, I, I love oh, yeah. about Mike. They're wonderful people, but it's very different. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that does kind of stick out to me, um, and I can't remember who was pointing this out the other day, but somebody was pointing out that, oh, I, I think it was actually my wife was pointing it out. Um, <laughs> we, on, we only see ourselves in two dimensions. We never see ourselves in three dimensions. Everybody else sees us in three dimensions. Wow. Except when we're, except we're on, on, when we're on Zoom, then we only see each other in two dimensions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting. And of course, you never see yourself the way you see yourself. Or people don't see you the way you see yourself in a mirror, right? right. Because of the, the flip, well, right. both with our, our, our left brain, right brain thing. And also that the camera, uh, a lot of cameras don't mirror you. Um, mm -hmm. So it's so interesting that people can look when you see yourself on camera you think i don't i don't think i look like that but that's how everybody sees you or vice versa you say yeah that's how i look and then people meet you in real life and go yeah you don't look like that at all <laughs> <laughs> now of course we are going to reach the time fairly soon i think when we're going to have holographic video right so then you'll actually be able to see yourself in three dimensions Right, and you'll be able to sort out the back of your hair without right. having to have four mirrors. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a good thing. This will be a very good thing. Yes, like Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's <laughs> also going to be—it's going to be a bit of a challenge for some people because I think we all have ideas in our head about what we're like, and then we'll see what the physical reality is that everybody else thinks that they see, and we'll <laughs> say, "Well, that's not what I see." <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> not ready. I, I thought I stood up straighter than that. I don't understand. Oh, right, <laughs> right. Oh Absolutely. That is weird. It is. It is weird. Yeah, how we see yeah. ourselves is so different to how we are seen. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and then, of course, there's that very um, profound truth that we don't see others how they are. We see them as we are because we always look through our own lenses yes. right? right. And, and so actually nobody is as they seem and to make the thing even more complex because and cindy and i've talked about this a lot because our brains are only able to process a certain amount of data per second and we're getting huge amounts of data that we can't even process a lot of the time our minds are filling in the blanks and making it up so, mm -hmm. to yeah. a large extent it's just this is what our our consciousness is creating rather than what other people are seeing and i mean I, I can just imagine how when we finally do see ourselves in three dimensions through a holographic video it could be a shock to the system because so it's too. going to be so different from what we had filled in mm -hmm. well it reminds me of you know the the way we see ourselves the, the filter and we were talking about this i think last week that uh that our story about ourselves is the filter that we see everything through that, right. we, that we create everything through i should say right everything mm -hmm. we create is through this filter of who we see ourselves to be and i was just thinking about like when people say that affirmations didn't work for them mm. right well when we think that we created these stories about ourselves many of them or the majority of them before we were seven and then as life went on mm -hmm. we added to those stories or we we actually anchored those stories because we were looking through that filter. So experiences that we had, we were like, see, because you know, whatever you believe about yourself, you're always gonna find the proof. Confirmatory bias. Yes. Right? So it's like, you find the proof to anchor that idea and make it true and make it truer and make it the truth over and over and over for like, you know, I mean, I'm 59 years old. So 52 years from the time I was seven, yeah. And then I'm going to try an affirmation for like three weeks. And I go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and other stories are like have roots and tentacles. Like, you know, they're in mm -hmm. there. So it's like, yeah, we got to give ourselves a little more time and space to tell the stories. To Yeah. And yeah. That's, exactly, that's exactly why I talk about leveraging your environment because when you can put, you can be doing your affirmations, but when you can deliberately imprint upon your environment a visual proof yeah. that you are your affirmation, yeah. 
-hmm. then um, we, we did this when we experimented with going vegan, with becoming vegan. Um, firstly, my daughter went vegetarian, which was okay. She was still eating some like dairy and stuff, but then she went vegan and oh dear God. Um, and <laughs> well, it gets so very complicated when you're a family of omnivores, right? Um, so I took it as a whole new uh, adventure in cooking. And after about a couple of months of this, she said, why don't we experiment being going for a week of being vegan? And so the first thing was to basically eat all the meat in the that we had <laughs> right <laughs> because i knew i would default it if it was in that freezer i was going to have it i was going to cook it because that was my default and so we made the fridge a vegan fridge which was okay. really really interesting because every time i opened the door and i thought i'll just have some uh, like a a cheese and chutney sandwich which is from chutney is a south african and indian thing um and that's one of my go-to comfort foods well it was and then I'd open them just like, ah, oh, shit, no cheese. <laughs> no. I forgot, we're vegans. Oh, yeah, right. Right. But this is, what the, this is what my environment, because I deliberately and intentionally imprinted physical proof, physical confirmatory bias of this affirmation that we were doing, this inside change, my brain reminded me that mm. when my eyes would remind me of what I was trying to change internally right. and it was so interesting to watch everybody butt up against what they expected the environment to be when we had changed it deliberately to remind us of what we're doing differently um and so yeah i think i really think leveraging your environment can shorten the gap between uh, the time it takes to transition into a new story about yourself a new lens that you view yourself through i love the visual proof because um most of us fortunately anyway are are seeing things in our environment all of the time mm -hmm. like if you're seeing me on video and you see i know it looks messy and i keep thinking i'm going to put something more elegant behind me but i'm in my office and behind me is this wall of thank you cards from clients telling me how much I help them, right? And to me, that's the visual proof on those days when I'm second guessing myself. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. this is like, no, look, I mean, this is evidence. Here's the evidence, right? So I think it's it's wonderful idea to do that. And, and it's so interesting, Cindy, that before you told us what it was, I might have said, yeah, that's a bit messy. Now that you say, lean back and say what it is, it's like, Oh my God, the abundance. I love that there's <laughs> piles of stuff on there because it's just like more and more affirmations and thank you notes. I think it's brilliant. At, so, the, yeah. point, at the point that I was like, okay, I got to take that off. I keep meeting with people on Zoom and they have these beautiful, elegant offices and surroundings, right? Um, I really was like ready to take it all down. I hadn't said anything to anybody. And then, and then I met with a client on Zoom and then I think she asked me about it. Two months later, she sent me this message, and that was the day that I was like, going to take it all down. I get this message out of nowhere. It says, I just wanted you to know that I was so inspired by your office that I've taken all of my thank you cards and things people have said nice things about me, and I've put them all over my wall in my office. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love this thing to be like that to be yeah. like good taste or style, right? But it works for me because it's a reminder of – success that i've had it's a reminder absolutely of something good i've brought to the world and so yeah um i talk about my file of fabulousness to all my clients um my file of fabulousness is basically screenshots of everything anybody has said about me that's complimentary or nice and it goes into either a word document actually at the moment it's one of those um folders and it's full of um jpegs of mm -hmm. screenshots um, and I have it as part of my wallpaper on my on my PC, which means on wobbly days, you know, when your brain is being an absolute asshole and it's all saying all the worst <laughs> things about you, and um, and you can't remember anything good. It's your brain just gets so honed mm. in on this one tiny crappy thing you did, um, and you can't remember. You literally can't see any of the other yeah. stuff and then it'll pop up and another one will pop up and another one and eventually i'm looking and this is 
because, and this is where our brains are so weird, because it's not something I said, it's something somebody else said about yes. me. Mm-hmm. It's more it believable somewhere. It must be true. Isn't that the weirdest thing? <laughs> and so it's like in the theater, we say, don't believe your own press unless it's good. <laughs> then you can believe it. And so, and this is exactly it. It's, it's, I, so I call it my file of fabulousness. And on some days I'm like literally paging through it because until I can believe again. Um, so a tip to anybody listening, curate everything, curate all your rave reviews, everything. And even if it's one little sentence on a Facebook comment, copy that, put it down. You will be pleased on your next wobbly day to have all this proof for yourself. Years ago, that. my rabbi told me something, and he he mentioned the phrase. He said, "Oh, that's for her." Uh, I had sent his wife a card, I think, and he said, "Oh, that's going right into her sunshine file." Oh, and I, I love said, that. "What is a sunshine file?" And he said, "That is where you put every nice thing, every letter, every card, anything people say, any good press, right? It goes in the sunshine file for on those days." So I. I mean, that's a stellar idea, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, you know, it's like you get what you focus on. And so your brain is going to get hooked into focusing on that one little daft thing or that imagined slight or whatever it is. And then you can focus on proof, literal proof. And you just keep focusing until you pull yourself back to center or forward facing again, whichever comes first. I love how you've managed to find a way to repeatedly leverage reasons for feeling good about yourself. What was it they say? Every time that something good happens, you're supposed to celebrate it. Mm-hmm. You don't celebrate it once. You celebrate it over yeah. and over and <laughs> oh, over yeah. and over Absolutely. and over. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And you know, it's so interesting because I, um, it's another crazy thing about our human brains is that we, we scoot past successes. Oh, yeah. we, we, you know, everybody says joy is fleeting. Um, but but we all know that misery can feel like it's a hundred years long. So it's it and it's I don't know why our human brains work this way, but we need to put as much attention on the good stuff as our brains would like us to put on the bad stuff. And so this is how we get to celebrate. We not only celebrate it in the moment, but we anchor it. It becomes not just an event, but evidence of who we are. I talk about this with my clients. There's a difference between something that happens to you, which is an event, and something that happens through you, which is evidence of who you are. So when you have somebody like like, um, Cindy's clients who send her a thank you note, that is evidence of who she is. Um, It's not just a one-off event where she said something nice and somebody sent her a card. Mm -hmm. So there is is this, when you get all these... um, these rave reviews or nice things that people say, about, I have a file, it says nice things that people say about me. These, are, This is evidence of who I am when I, when I forget. And so, yeah, we definitely need to celebrate so many more times than we, because we'll have this tendency to scoot past it. And we go, oh, that's nothing, you know, yeah, deflect yeah, the compliment yeah. or whatever it is. And you ask the question, how do the brains do it? I, I think it's because the brains are, <laughs> what, despite what some people would say about how poor their memory is, the brain is an amazing recording device. Oh, yeah. It truly right. is. I mean, it's just, it's like stellar in terms of its ability to record. The, the only thing that holds the brain back in its recording ability is our conscious ability to process data. So mm-hmm. it can actually only store a small amount of the actual data that comes through. But because the brain is and the human mind is so good at creating stuff, that doesn't matter. We just create the rest of it and we record that. And right. so now we have this, this <laughs> we have this massive recording of all the stuff that's like 90% created by us and 10% coming from the data that came to us. And and we remember it. And then we keep replaying it. And we say, Well, why do I keep replaying this thing over over my head? It's because we've got great recorders. That's why. Right. Yes. <laughs> well, and also look how many times we are taught, I don't know, either by people when we're growing up, either by people telling us to, I don't know, not toot our own horn or something, um, but or by examples of other people that, you know, we want to be modest or something, but it's like like you just used that phrase, like, oh, it's nothing. Like, it's like people will compliment us on something and we push the compliment away. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, I love your sweater. Oh, this old thing. You know, it's like, or we started explaining <laughs> how we got it on sale or we, <laughs> we try to make it not 
like instead of just saying thank you and that, that was one of the things that i learned when i first started learning about um conscious creation and being able to be a good receiver mm -hmm. being open to receive is to say yes and to say thank you like to to just receive a compliment mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, not explain, not try to discount it, not brush it off, not push it push it away. Just say thank you, <laughs> right? And, right? And don't forget that also you are you are when you deflect a compliment, you are diminishing someone else's opinion. I know it is incredibly unkind to them if they say, "Oh, I you know I love your handbag," or "I love you know you look really good today," and you go, oh, "No, I'm having," a then it's like okay well obviously i'm an idiot because i thought this look you look really nice but if you say you're not then obviously i don't know what i'm doing it's it's very it's very unkind but i but i'll also say receiving compliments is a skill it's not you know kids are taught not to be full of themselves don't right. brag um you know i was raised by irish nuns there was a lot of tut tutting Ooh. when i was <laughs> when i was little uh, well i was well, very full of myself that was a phrase that was in my a lot of report cards um and i always wondered about that phrase like what are you supposed yourself? to be full of half of yourself it's so funny but yes that one and she talks a lot that was the other one but yes so it's it, it is something and then you know my mother would say she'd counteract that and she'd say if you don't toot your own horn someone will use it as a spittoon <laughs> And I, oh my goodness, I love it so much. <laughs> you will hear, the longer we go, you'll hear more and more of my mother's bon mots. But that was one of them. And once I looked up in the old fashioned dictionary what spittoon was, it was like, okay, no, I'm definitely going to be tooting my own horn. <laughs> oh, that's, that's precious. I just did a spit take. It was perfect timing. I was drinking my tea. You said that, and I almost had tea. <laughs> oh, it is, you know, and there's there's this thing that goes on on um, social media with hashtag humble brag. Yeah, none of that. We don't do humble brags. Just blow your own horn. What, 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 what's humble brag? I don't even know. What that is. It's that it's that sort of. I did something good, and I I probably it's it's a it's a half assed way of telling people how good you are. Oh, I and, see. Okay. And it's and it's a humble brag. And it's like, no, just brag. It's fine mm -hmm. to if you don't if you don't shine a spotlight on your skills and your achievements and your talents and the things that you're damn good at, how is anybody going to know that you can help them? Yeah, don't do the humble brag. Just either brag or just be quiet. Don't do yes, the exactly. brag. It's worse. it's worse than either one, right? It's it like, is. Oh. It is. And so it's it's and it's prevalent. It gets and it's just like, no, just tell us how good you are at something. Because then when people need you, they will know who to look for. You know, I read something, I read something once I thought was really applicable here, and it was about that because people are worried, I think anyway, uh many people are worried about appearing arrogant mm. oh yeah and so they get confidence and arrogance mixed up mm. and so they they want to push away compliments they don't want to brag on themselves because they don't want to appear arrogant and cocky and like you know nobody <laughs> wants that right so but here's here's the difference you know confidence might be knowing that you are the best at what you do of any of these people in the room you might know that mm -hmm. arrogance is when you think it makes you better than everyone mm -hmm. oh good There's description i like that difference yes yeah. yes absolutely. So I, yeah it's a big difference the energy is different right it's like yes. it is. i i love the idea of i remember deepak chopra one time in one of his books i think or somewhere talking about silently when you look someone in the eye to silently wish them namaste, which we know means, you know, something like the divinity within me sees and recognizes the divinity within you, right? The light within me recognizes the light within you or something like that. And he kind of added to it that when you look someone in the eye and you, and you silently wish them namaste, you recognize that no one is above me and no one is beneath me. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's, how you express confidence that's how you tell someone what you're good at 
without it being arrogant and cocky and gross is that you recognize I'm proud of myself because I'm good at this. I worked hard to be good at this. This was my goal and I accomplished being good at this. And it doesn't make me any better than you. It just makes me maybe better at this thing, but I worked hard for that. So I'm not mm -hmm. better, I'm not higher or lower. I'm not more or lesser than you. I just do this thing well. <laughs> right, and it's never bragging if you can back it up, right? It's never, it's never cocky if you produce. Um, and, and a lot of the time, arrogance and cockiness come from a baseline uncertainty, a baseline of having to prove themselves. I and always this, think it is. Whereas true confidence doesn't require your, you to prove anything. You right. can, it's, it's, it's the standard Bruce Lee thing, right? You know, you can walk away from right. a fight because you don't need to win it. I doesn't, think it all, doesn't it also come from the idea that a person who uses the description of being, someone being cocky or arrogant is really describing their own limitations? Yes, yes. I, th I think a lot of the time it has to do with um, the way they're receiving what that person is saying. I, th I think that I can tell people I'm damn good at what I do. Mm -hmm. And somebody who's feeling less sure about what they do will read it as arrogant. I have a tendency to want to, when I'm around someone who I I perceive anyway, is that they're being arrogant. I also recognize that it's a possibility that they feel really insecure, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they're trying to boost their own confidence or security. Mm -hmm. And then I actually have more compassion on them for that. Instead of wanting to judge them as, oh, this person is so arrogant and full of themselves, I think, oh, they must be really nervous and feeling insecure. Mm -hmm. um, and so how can I help them be more secure in who they are, right? It's like just a, just a little energy tweak there that helps me embody more of the values that I want to embody, which is compassion and caring and non-judgmental, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm sure I've been arrogant before, um, and I'm sure that it was because I was feeling unsure of myself. Mm -hmm. So, but I but think it's so, in it's so interesting when you acknowledge, like, <laughs> I was walking in the Skyways a couple of days ago, and this guy walks towards me and he goes, Hey, you look good today. And I went, I know, right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> his face, he was flabbergasted, <laughs> absolutely flabbergasted. He just stood there and looked at me. I mean, he didn't even say anything. I just, what, because it was, it was just spontaneous. I was feeling really good. I had dressed up because I felt like dressing up. And, and you know, and I, I said to him, I know, right? You have such good taste. And off I walked. And and I, it was, it was, it was such an interesting moment because he stopped and turned around and watched me walking away. I could see it reflected. And it's like, that was totally not the, Res the 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 response that he was anticipating right and it was so funny because i was thinking why is that not the response why shouldn't it be the response mm, you know yeah. excellent response i love that response it's, if, I got, it's, if i if i had been the person i'm not sure i would have said something like that if <laughs> i had been the person who had said that and you gave me that response i would say yeah i love it <laughs> well just so you know jackie and her husband they're like the Jetsons. They live in the sky rise building where they have tubes that go out to places and they walk. That's why when she's walking in the skyway, she's literally walking. Yeah, it's downtown yeah. Minneapolis. We have tubes oh, yes. to okay. help us avoid the weather. Right, right. Yes. Um, so, yes. And uh, and at this point, actually, it helps me avoid construction because, you know, Minnesota has two seasons. Mm -hmm. It's either winter or construction. And <laughs> And construction right now is tedious to say the least. So I'm walking in the skyways, even though it's 80 degrees outside. So yeah, it's but it is it's it's way quieter than it used to be. So people get a chance to acknowledge each other when you're the only ones there. Right. <laughs> in the winter time, Jackie can walk miles and miles. She can go to Whole Foods and go to the you know the stores and the shops and go all these places, and then then say to me. I have literally not been outside. In right. <laughs> That's it. And this is exactly why we chose this building is because we mm -hmm. have, I think it's 25 blocks of skyways 
So there's all oh, sorts yeah. of things, theater and oh, stores and it's, it's not what it was pre pandemic, but it's starting to wake up again. So yeah. it makes total sense because anybody who knows anything about Minnesota weather, you don't want to be outside. It is the weather here yeah. is ridiculous. It's, it's, I, it's I, and you know, when, they, when people moved here first, they got free land if they stayed for two winters. I would have stayed one winter and gone, no, you can keep your land. That's fine. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> say, no, the, the very hardy types, you know, the Scandinavians mm. and the, the northerners, they, they were, yeah, it's, it's, it gets brutal. And we were here during mm -hmm. the Arctic uh, freeze a couple of years when we hit minus 50. Oof. I definitely didn't even go into the skyways. It was, no, no. I've experienced minus 40. I've never experienced minus 50. Minus, minus 40 is cold enough. So mm -hmm. you go out and you like breathe and like a snowflake appears. <laughs> no, your nose, not so far your off. nose hairs freeze and your That's tear ducts right. freeze. Your eyes get crinkly because the the, the the moisture in your eyes freezes. That, that's Louise's favorite saying. It's not really cold if your nose hairs don't freeze. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is true. Yes, and so my grandbabies are damn cute, and that's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> But a very good reason, I might It is add. a very good reason. And skyways yes. are why, how we mitigate that. But yes. Those it's, skyways um, are cool. I've seen photos of that. That does actually look pretty cool, like having mm. a city in the Well, Minnesota kind of is where the enclosed mall was right. uh, the genesis of the enclosed mall for the, yeah. for the very same reason. Yeah. It's like we really just want to go into one place and have everything at our disposal without having to go outside. Which outside. is really good. It's yeah. a good idea. Amazing. I yeah. love it. So, like, well, it seems so sci-fi to me for some reason, you know, like mm -hmm. these, these artists' conceptions probably of it before it ever happened were like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, very true. Absolutely. Yeah. I think they put them in in the 60s, late 50s into the 60s. It was a big deal. By the way, you, you mentioned something earlier, and I wanted to kind of go back and touch on it because it reminded me that it is a key portion of the Thai boot camp approach. Because one of the things that not only do they address transgressors, but uh, the part of the philosophy is you want to actually try to get to the point where you not only um, accept the transgressor, but you find a way to appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, bit, the big portion of what it is that they do, and and you what you were talking about. I don't remember the exact example. I'm kind of reaching. Okay, what what exactly was it? But you were touching on something where it was all about turning that thing around. And really appreciating this thing that just haunted you. I can't remember mm -hmm. what I had to do with with height or when you were telling the story about how you were the dancer when you were a kid, or it was something like that. I can't remember what you said, but it just resonated. Like, yeah, that's that's a big part of what I'm I'm about to go explore. Mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to it. Experiencing something hard or even traumatic. Um, eventually there will be some treasure that we find in there. I mean, I'm convinced that our deepest wound is directly connected to our life purpose in some way. It's, it's there. Sometimes we have to look for it. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's not, not like, always oh, about, it's not always about healing the wound because there's, you know, there are people who have had awful experiences mm -hmm. in their lives. And sometimes that's not, easily healed but you learn to carry it differently mm. you learn to um for example i was watching there's a there was a mexican guitarist many 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 moons ago who had a paralyzed hand um he had i, I can't remember how it happened whether it was an accident or an illness but he had a paralyzed hand but he learned to play an exceptional guitar mm -hmm. by using his hand in different ways. He couldn't learn to play the guitar from an able person, right. in inverted commas, who played normally because he didn't, his hand wouldn't work that way. But he became this genius mm -hmm. guitarist in his own way. And the amazing thing is when you hear him, I wish I could remember his name. When you can hear him, you know it's him because nobody can play the way he <laughs> I was just going to say, I bet able-bodied people cannot do what he No, right. exactly. And so this, there's, you know, we all, we all strive for the healing of wounds. And sometimes it's not about healing. It's about right. becoming a person who can encompass and is strong enough to carry it with grace and with compassion for yourself and to learn to navigate a little differently and own that your path 
entails learning to navigate this differently and carry the wound. I thought for a second you were actually going to talk about a different guitarist who I'd seen who had no hands. He learned to play with his feet, with his toes. Wow. One foot on the fretboard with one foot, one, one set of toes, the other set of toes with a toe pick that he would be picking at the strings. And he was also a genius. He, no, that that kind amazing. of devotion to becoming somebody who can do that. Mm. It's like I married my accompanist so I could stop having piano lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, those of you that are listening to the podcast and can't see the video, Walt's talking about the guy playing with his feet and Jackie and I are both just shaking our heads. <laughs> Absolutely. And it, yeah, it's just that kind of devotion, that kind of, of determination to be a version of you that does a thing that you want to be able to do. That just blows my mind. I, mm -hmm. I, I am in elevating people. the shadow mm -hmm. to the gift. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at Helen Keller. You look yes. at somebody. I did. I did a show. There's a, a show about her, a play about her called Monday After the Miracle, um, and it's the it's the Monday after Annie Sullivan gets her to connect that the water running on her hand is the same as she's tapping into her right. palm, right? Mm -hmm. And it's that 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 one little connection that made all the difference. She, be, I mean, she spoke to the world. You know, the, the, she 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 was a world speaker. She a global traveler, speaking to thousands of people. She's a published author. This it, it is astonishing what humans are capable of. So this brings us right back. Keep your file of fabulousness. Keep your focus <laughs> on what you do amazingly well. Brag about it to everybody. And we will be the tide that rises all human boats. That's, I'm have to write that down. That's it. <laughs> well, it's also the title, the file of fabulousness. I mean, I always like to find a good title for the show. That's it. That's, that's it. Yes. I love, I love that. It. Love it. No, but that's it. That's it. Is find find a way to elevate those shadows to the gift. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They don't always you're right. They don't always get healed. Helen Keller never had sight. Mm -mm. No, she never right. heard anything either. Yep. And yeah. And, so, and it, interesting side note too, they now have gotten to the point where they can give people who have never had hearing the ability to hear. And very often once they get it, they don't want it. Wow. Because that's amazing. It, they're, they're inundated with all the stimulus that they don't know how to process. Uh -huh. Right. And you know, yeah. it's kind of a joke that I've made, but I think it's somewhat true. It's like certain people that I know that are elderly people that have hearing aids, then they refuse to wear them. Mm -hmm. yes. like, no, they've discovered they don't want to hear all that crap, right? Mm -hmm. like, That's right. Just turn it off. I think part of it's true. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, interesting idea there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's always a mistake to, to assume. Well, it's always a mistake to assume that just because somebody experiences something that we can physically see that they're experiencing it the way we think they're experiencing it. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's yeah. the real mistake every single time. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Well, once Good again, I, I, I have to tell you, uh, up until recently, Fridays have been the high energy show, probably particularly because Debbie G is just like this high, high energy person. I warned her this past Friday that Wednesday is now on pace to exceed and set the bar higher. And she said, oh, OK, you know, she's ready for, to accept the challenge here. But I have to say, we've done it. This has been a really high vibe uh, show here. So thank you guys very much. Really, really Excellent. good. Excellent. Yay. We love Exciting. it. Exciting. And we love it. We love that you've joined the, 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 the cast here, so to speak, Jackie, because you've definitely raised that vibe just by your presence. So thank you for that. Thank you. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> and very well, I'm <laughs> very well. I'm so looking forward to next week and hearing all your um all your 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 reportings of of your even your questions too, because you, you'll get to ask the stream of David questions. You'll be able to ask Abraham type questions. Oh, I'm gonna have yeah. to have a have a have a few questions ready. So have that ready. Mm -hmm. so. All right. So thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Podcast listeners. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.